Good morning and thanks for joining us today. To the media on the line, please press star 1 to line up for questions. I will now invite Minister Farnworth to give his remarks. Minister Farnworth. Thank you. Good morning. And uh, I'd like to uh, gratefully acknowledge <coughs> that we are gathered on the territory of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh and Squamish peoples. I'm Mike Farnworth, the Minister of Public Safety and Solicitor General. Off the top, I want to speak to the vast majority of British Columbians who have been doing an extraordinary job of keeping COVID-19 <coughs> out of our communities. Physical distancing has become a regular part of our lives, as has wearing a mask when distancing isn't possible. We have made great sacrifices to protect our elders in long-term care and to keep our healthcare system functioning safely. Collectively, our actions have helped curb the spread of COVID-19. The unfortunate reality is that this pandemic is not ending soon, but together, we will get through it. Now more than ever, this is a time to be selfless. It is a time to tell friends and family that breaking the rules will hurt us all. We can't let the bad decisions made by a few erode the progress that we have made together. And while we need to have patience, while we need to be kind to each other, we also need to redouble our efforts to keep each other safe and to flatten the curve. As we've all seen over the past few weeks, there is a small minority of selfish individuals across the province who are disregarding the public health measures in place. Our provincial and regional health officers, and indeed most British Columbians, have worked too hard and sacrificed too much to keep transmission rates low. I know many of you have concerns over the spikes in cases amongst young people. There is no excuse to disregard the responsibility we share to keep each other safe in this pandemic. And we've all seen it in the news or in our neighborhoods. Large house parties, unsanctioned events on our streets, on our beaches. Enough is enough. These irresponsible actions are putting our most vulnerable at risk. These actions could cost people their lives, and that is why stricter enforcement is necessary. That's why today, effective immediately, the province is enabling police and other enforcement officers to issue $2,000 violation tickets to owners or organizers for contraventions of the provincial health officer's order on gatherings and events. This includes violations such as hosting or organizing a gathering or event in excess of 50 people, not keeping a list and contact information of everyone who attends an event, or hosting more than five guests gathered in vacation accommodation such as an Airbnb. And to be clear, just because your party has less than 50 people does not make it legal. You must follow all guidelines. So if you're hosting a large penthouse party, organizing a street gathering, or a drum circle on the beach, we will be watching. The $2,000 violation tickets will be going to owners and organizers where unsafe events take place. We'll be targeting venues, promoters, and as necessary, we'll also be taking against action against problematic attendees and individuals. To this end, police and other enforcement officers will be able to issue $200 violation tickets for anyone actively encouraging large gathering or events or refusing to leave or disperse when directed to do so and $200 violation tickets for those refusing to follow the safe operating plans of businesses or anyone who engages in bullying or abusive behavior towards employees. People make mistakes. And if you're asked to leave a gathering, leave. Don't yell at the waiter who asks you not to push your tables together at a restaurant. Don't be belligerent towards the hardworking people who are trying to keep us all safe. In addition to the police, 
To help enforce these measures, we're calling on staff from various provincial ministries to help issue these tickets for the duration of the COVID-19 pandemic. This includes liquor, cannabis and gaming inspectors, community safety unit inspectors and conservation officers. WorkSafe BC investigators will also assist through their existing authority and tools. The province <clears throat> is building a comprehensive and integrated compliance and enforcement regime to put a halt to bad actors in all corners of BC. That includes working with local governments to revoke business or liquor license is where issues occur. This is an all hands on deck approach. Our public health officials have done so much to guide us through this pandemic. They are busy contact tracing, supporting people in self-isolation, managing outbreaks and preparing our schools for students to return. We cannot expect our health officers to break up parties in the middle of the night, scan social media for unsanctioned events or be available in every corner of the province. It's time to take a tougher stance, time to be clear. From this point forward, we're going to make sure those making selfish decisions are risking more than their reputations. I'm disappointed that stricter enforcement has become necessary. British Columbians have enough to deal with right now. We need to hold the line to follow the guidance of the provincial health officer. Right now, we need to worry about our collective health. To report concerns around order violations from event organizers, venues or individuals can contact their local government bylaw office. Local bylaw offices can help follow up on concerns and engage police departments, health officers and WorkSafe BC as necessary. If you're unable to reach a local bylaw office, contact your local police department's non-emergency line. And remember, you may not know someone's individual circumstances, so we ask that you use your best judgment and not jump to conclusions. I'd like to acknowledge and thank local governments and their bylaw officers for their continued collaboration and cooperation with the province. We must hold our ground. We cannot let bad actors ruin it for the rest of us. I can assure you that the province will do everything we can to stop the shameful practices and keep people safe. We need to ensure that all public health orders and orders issued under the Emergency Program Act are followed. And remember, a party is not worth someone's life. Let's get back on track. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. And before we take questions, a reminder once again to the media to please press star 1 to line up for questions. We will be taking one question and one follow-up at this time. And please do not mute your phones. You will not be heard until I call your name. We begin today with Rob Buffum, CTV. Rob, go ahead, please. Oh, thank you. Hi, Minister. Um, I'm wondering, you've talked about the, uh, the host or operator would be the person, as I understand it, who would be subject to the fines uh, primarily. But what about a scenario, say, last Friday in Saanich, there was a party with upwards of 100 teenage kids out on the street. How, so that, you know, if they're listening, how is this going to be enforced in relation to them if there's not an obvious organizer or host of a party? Well, certainly, uh, the police have the ability to uh, to to issue the uh, the $200 uh, attendee uh, violation tickets, uh, and clearly, uh, you know, the police making a, an order uh, telling individuals to to disperse. And if they refuse to, or they're being belligerent, then they would be able to uh, to issue a a $200 uh, violation ticket. Do you have a follow up? I do. I'm just wondering about the scenario of a house party, um, and I'm hoping you can just confirm or clarify that I understand this correctly. If there's a house party and there's 50 people, that's allowed, but let's say, you know, 38 of them are gathered in a kitchen, as often happens. Um, would there be tickets? I don't think there would be, but you tell me, would there be tickets handed out to individuals who are standing closer than two meters apart? Or what would happen there if the police show up and there's, I don't know, um, 50 or more people there and there's a, there's also violations in terms of physical distancing who's on the hook for that and would that be enforced 
Well, first off, um, whenever there's a gathering and, it, and it's not just about 50 people, the uh, the provincial health officer has in place um, orders that you you know, rules that you are to maintain uh, to to be able to maintain two meters of uh, social distancing. Uh, again, please have uh, have their discretion. But if you have you know uh, 38 people crammed into a kitchen um, and that, that uh, you know there's no social distancing being able to take place, then clearly uh, that's in uh, a violation. Uh, of the of the order, and the owner would be subject to a uh, to a to a, a two thousand uh, dollar ticket. Uh, and for example, if the police uh, indicated that people had to leave, uh, and they chose not to leave, or they were being belligerent, then of course they would be. Uh, um, uh, it, they would get a, a two hundred dollar uh, ticket. The next question comes from Jordan Armstrong, Global. Good morning, Minister. In addition to police, you also mentioned that many members uh, of the civil service will be involved in this sort of scofflaw patrols. So, so roughly how many, and, and will they have the same ability to issue those tickets as police? Yeah, they're what are known as special constables, uh, and so they would have the authority to be able to uh, to issue uh, to issue tickets. So that's why the list includes uh, community safety unit uh, officers, conservation officers, uh, for example, as uh, as uh, the kind of uh, of uh, uh, um, special constables who would have the ability uh, to issue a ticket. Follow up, Jordan. And I'm just yeah, and I'm just curious. I mean, we've heard a lot in, in the last couple of weeks about trying new platforms to get the message out to young people. But do you think we're at the point where the message is out, most people have heard it, but we're really just dealing with people now who are ignoring it? We are dealing with a small minority of people. The vast majority of this people in this province are following the guidelines. They are doing the responsible thing. Uh, and, and so what we're seeing, and particularly as uh, from, the, from Dr. Bonnie Henry has said, a number of these spikes that we've seen in cases are coming from private house parties. They're coming from inside uh, uh, residences. And that's the real problem. And it's a small minority of people. And so that's what these, uh, these enforcement measures are targeted at. Thank you. The next question comes from Brenna Owens, Canadian Press. Yeah, uh, I mean, this. thank you. And this has kind of been answered, but I guess I'm just wondering if I could go a bit deeper. Like, I'm just wondering about, you know, police might not always, or bylaw officers might not hear about a house party um, until, you know, by the time people have already mingled. I'm just wondering, it seems like these $200 tickets are if, people refuse to disperse, but what about, like, if, you know, they're just clearly in violation? Um, you know, don't you think that would be more of a deterrent? Look, police uh, uh, use their discretion uh, on these kinds of situations all the time. And what we're wanting to do is to get the message out that, look, there are consequences for not uh, following the not following the uh, the health orders. Uh, so, in the case of a house party, and and the rules are there, and you can go online and, and see the find the rules about the gatherings. And and the reality is this: local communities and local bylaw officers often have a very good idea on where those problem properties are and who these sort of the, the repeat uh, offenders are, as do police, because it's not just COVID-19 that they're often called to uh, to an unruly to an unruly house party, for example. Uh, and so they have the ability to go to uh, to give a ticket to the owner of the uh, of the residence or an establishment or at the venue. Um, people can be told to to uh, to disperse, uh, and they may decide that, given the nature of it, that that. You know, it's not just about dispersing, but you will receive a a two hundred a two hundred dollar ticket for uh, you know in in a, in a particularly uh, egregious egregious uh, offense. Uh, but the message is is this: there's a small minority. That's where these measures are targeted at, and the uh, the challenge that we're facing uh, is is very much uh, those indoor venues, and uh, that's what we're trying to target here. Follow Brenna. Uh, sure. We, I guess maybe I would just pivot um, and kind of use the example of like that like beach party that happened at Third Beach a while ago and like how enforcement might have happened under these new measures in that instance. 
Well, in terms uh, of like individual it, picketing. Uh, in the case of in the case of uh, th that beach party, for example, um, one of the things that we saw was that uh, it was advertised and people were told not to bring a mask. So here you have a case of the organizer or the promoter of event deliberately encouraging people to ignore uh, provincial health uh, officer orders. Uh, that uh, that uh, the, the individual or individuals uh, who, who are responsible for that would get a two thousand dollar a Two thousand dollar, a two thousand uh, dollar fine. Uh, those who were attending, and uh, if they were not, for example, engaged in the appropriate social distancing of two uh, two meters, and and police said, you know, you need to to, to disperse, and they didn't, they would receive a two hundred dollar ticket. So clearly, uh, the message is, you know, um, uh, if you're outside and you're not following uh, uh, the the proper orders, there's a there's a there's a, a you know a penalty. Thank you. The next question comes from Zara Premji, CBC. Zara, are you there? Patrolling the street. Hi, yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead, please. Uh, thank you, Minister. So patrolling the streets and beaches is one thing, but how do you monitor private house parties, considering that's a major source of the problem? So are you relying on neighbors to call police, and how quickly are they going to appear to break this up and start fining? Um, first off, uh, as I said a, a moment ago, a, a lot of communities and their bylaw officers have a very good uh, a sense of local knowledge on the on an, on the problem properties um, in in their communities. Um, it will be obviously a, a complaint-driven uh, process, uh, and, it, and and in many ways, that's what you see right now, where you have uh, large-scale parties that, uh, as we know, sometimes uh, get out of control, and, and police attend as part of their regular their regular uh, operations right now. Uh, and what we're saying is that COVID-19 is now an additional layer on that as to a reason why uh, they need to be, uh, they, they, they have to be uh, uh, monitored uh, either by bylaw or by the police uh, and to be able to uh, enforce the, uh, the new regulations uh, that we have uh, put in place uh, today. Follow up, Zara? Yes, so will there be any onus property manager? Like, are you concerned these types of gatherings will now move further underground because of these new enforcement tools? Um, these will apply to, uh, to property owners, uh, regardless of whether it is a residence, for example, or a strata. Uh, and uh, property owners do have a responsibility uh, to, in, to, uh, to know what is going on uh, within, uh, within, their, within their property. The next question comes from Graham Woods, Glacier Media. Well, hi, Mike. Um, I'm just curious, what, how many uh, cases of COVID have been a result of uh, so-called violations of, of public health orders? I can't give you a specific number. That's probably best uh, addressed to the provincial health officer. But what I can tell you is that in her re reports over the last number of weeks and the increase that we have seen in the number of cases, it has been specifically mentioned that those private uh, indoor uh, residence gatherings have been uh, a key driver uh, in the increase uh, in the cases that we have seen. Follow up, Graham? Right. So uh, if police enter a, a kitchen with 30 people, uh, could not be six, five cohorts of six people that are distanced apart? Like, how, how are police proving any of this? And, and what's your basis for all this? Well, first off, uh, there, it, it, you don't just say, oh, there's 30 people in here and we're five cohorts of six people. That doesn't fly um, uh, right now, uh, and it doesn't fly with these regulations uh, in place. Um, the, the guidelines that the provincial health officer uh, has put in place uh, under her order are pretty clear. You have to be in a space that manages to maintain the appropriate uh, 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 two meters of, of social distancing. The next question comes from Marcello Bernardo, News 1130. Hi, Minister. Thank you for taking my question. Um, I just wanted to ask you, at any point leading up to this with the state of emergency, have you considered imposing a curfew like they did in Italy, and if not, why? Uh, no, uh, we have not uh, considered uh, putting in place a curfew, and any decision around that would certainly have to be uh, done on the recommendation of the, uh, the provincial health officer. 
follow up, Marcello? Is that possible? Um, just following up, would, would it be possible to do something like that or enlist police in BC Hydro to cut off power to a house party or a DJ setting up in the middle of Vancouver's entertainment district? I mean, certainly, uh, you know, something like that that is possible, uh, but what I would say right now is we're dealing with a small minority of people and uh, we believe that these measures uh, will be effective uh, in dealing with that. Uh, clearly if there was, you know, um, something being set up in the middle of the entertainment district, um, it wouldn't just be a case of, 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 you know, having Hydro turn the power off. The police themselves would have uh, just under other measures and orders that are already in place to deal with a situation like that. Thank you. The next question comes from Bob Mackin, Breaker News. Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, in California, authorities are empowered to disconnect power from party houses that are violators. Why, why are you not empowering BC Hydro to do the same in BC? Uh, right now, uh, we're identified these measures as the appropriate uh, response uh, to be able to, to deal with the, uh, with the situation. Uh, and uh, we think that uh, as we've been engaged in, is in progressive step-by-step -step enforcement, uh, and we will continue to do that. And we think that these measures uh, will be able to, uh, to, uh, to, to deal with the situation. Follow, Bob? Yes. Uh, back in April, you had a similar get tough announcement on on the issue of price gouging with fines up to $2,000 for, for that. And there were thousands of complaints to Consumer Protection BC and uh, voluminous evidence. But as I checked yesterday and still, there's no provincial violation ticket for anyone uh, regarding price gouging. Why will this be different? Why should the public have any faith that you're actually going to get tough and there will actually be fines? Well, the fact of the matter is, is that the fines are in place. Uh, and at the very beginning of the pandemic, in relation to price gouging, we made it clear because there were examples of some price gouging taking place. Uh, in those cases, uh, uh, material was confiscated. Uh, we put out uh, what the penalties were going to be. Uh, and it isn't just about uh, uh, levying a fine, but rather it's sending a message that government takes this seriously. And the reality is, since then, um, the issue has, you know, people have gotten the, uh, have gotten the message. All of those cases uh, are, 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 are investigated by Consumer Protection BC. Uh, in this particular situation, again, we are seeing a small minority of people who are, um, you know, either willfully ignorant um, and uh, deciding that uh, they don't have to follow the rules. Uh, we're letting them know that yes, they do, and that there will be financial penalties. And I fully expect that uh, people will take this uh, in, into, uh, that they will be enforced, and that uh, that's why it's being done. Next question comes from Mike Hager, Globe and Mail. Hi, uh, thanks for taking our question. You've mentioned outdoor parties quite a bit, but the best available science doesn't point to uh, transmission being as big a problem there as indoor partying. Um, is there going to be a focus on indoor house parties or maybe underground events as opposed to uh, beach gatherings and maybe the odd uh, sound system set up outside. Actually, I think most of the questions that I have been answering have been about uh, the indoor events. Um, I think I've been asked, you know, the one question about outdoor. Uh, I've made it clear uh, that our focus uh, and our, our, our big concern are those um, indoor uh, parties uh, that have been taking place in private residences, that that's where the significant uh, transmission uh, has, been, uh, has been taking place. Follow up? Yes. Uh, okay, so it's been almost a month since uh, new rules were put in place for short-term rentals and partying there. Uh, how many tickets have been issued and what has that done to crack down on people partying at houseboats, Airbnbs, places like that? Uh, in terms of uh, short-term uh, rentals, um, I can try and get you uh, uh, any numbers we have on that. But today's, uh, uh, today's enforcement uh, rules is about ensuring that we have consistency uh, right, across the, uh, right across the province so that there is a standard uh, penalty uh, and that uh, uh, people and the public know exactly what it is. We have time for one more question this sure, morning. Oh, do you have a follow-up? I'm sorry about that. We did get a follow-up. Mike, do you, uh, that was a follow-up? 
The next yeah. question comes from Mary Griffin, Czech News. And that will be the last oh, question hi. for this morning. Oh, thanks very much. Minister, I was just wondering, um, these fines that are coming in, is there any, if you find that it's not curbing the behavior to the extent that you're hoping, would there be any escalation? Do you have any plans to escalate uh, the action that you're taking today? As I said earlier, what we've always taken is a progressive approach, um, and the reality is, is most people are, are abiding by that. Most people are doing their job. Most people are abiding by the rules. Uh, we have a small minority who aren't. We're stepping up the level of enforcement on them. I expect people to uh, to to, uh, to to respect and uh, to follow the the uh, the changes that we've made today. And again, if there are a small minority of that subset that don't, then we may look at further uh, further additional measures. Follow up, Mary? Yes, thank you very much. And um, one thing I was wondering about, you mentioned also there's going to be a fine uh, for those um, who engage in abusive behavior, for example, against uh, servers in a restaurant. Um, and I just wanted to ask you about that. And also, um, in the case of where uh, someone posted about the beach party, don't bother carrying a mask, is there, when people are um, putting in writing, don't take these measures uh, to protect your health. Is there any risk of that person who's organizing that event who could face potentially uh, criminal charges? Um, if you're uh, ignorant enough and stupid enough uh, to encourage people to attend an event and not to follow uh, provincial health officer orders, uh, then you're setting yourself up for a fine. And of course, depending on, on what you do and how you do it, there may well be uh, uh, potential of, uh, of criminal charges uh, that could follow uh, from something like that. Thank you, Minister. And that's all the time we have this morning. Thank you all for joining.